Dude, let's go. We got the voice of paintball in here today, Matty Marshall. I apologize for bugging you so much, but I really <laughs> wanted you to come to the Ace Academy offices today. And thank you so much for accepting. Hey, uh, my pleasure <laughs> to be here at the Marvelous Studios, HK Studios here in Long Beach. My mom's from Long Beach, so we got some family history in this area of the world. I'm en route to Sacramento uh, for the practice that's going to be going down with Dynasty Infamous and Impact. We do have a, uh, as I was kind of, we were talking off camera a little bit, um, the weatherman on the news station was like, the biggest storm of the winter is uh, approaching Northern California, 8 Feet are going to be dumping in the Sierra. It's going to be a wet one out there. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. Here we go again. That's, but no choice, right? That, no, that, just, we're used to that at this point. No, Matty? 100%. And that's <laughs> what happens. That's, that's part of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mean, kind of the being able to persevere through adversity. And again, there's so many gifts of this game. I'm just kind of wondering, there's so many different things we could discuss in this conversation. So, so many. What would you like to begin with, Mark? Dude, first off, um, once again, I just want to say thank you so much. And uh, it really means a lot for you just for me and everyone here at HK Army for you to stop by. So I want to just make sure that we got through that one more time. I appreciate it. My yeah. pleasure though. I love what you guys have been doing. It's just so cool as a SoCal guy myself and, and seeing what you guys have been able to build. I mean, paintball, as it pushes its way into the world, when we have that grow paintball conversation, the, you know, as it pushes into a greater sphere of possibility and popularity, we have to have soldiers in the fight that are competent, charismatic and and, and build upon, you know, uh, past successes towards a better possible future. And the fact that, and that's what you guys have been doing, man. You know, I remember you guys as kids at, uh, SC village where we all kind of came up and yep. yeah, man. So I love you guys too, man. And it's, I, I, it's been a, it puts a smile on my face just thinking about <laughs> how far you guys have come. It really means a lot. Thank you, Maddie. But it's important for the game. Yeah. So I'm no, I don't say that just because I'm chilling here in your chair. Yeah. Uh, I say that with uh, the utmost sincerity. I appreciate that. No, you were saying when we were walking around, we had one of our old heat presses there. You're like, it all started from a heat press. I'm like, it's still right here. <laughs> is that the original heat press? It's not the original one. Just but... tell me it is. Okay. Yeah. Just, that okay. Oh, that's one. amazing. That was oh, the one. That was the original amazing. one in the back of the trunk at SC Village. <laughs> that one broke, but you know, it's very similar one to that one. Yeah. But the cool thing is, I mean, I don't know. I I like to. Like when, as I walked you around, right. I mean, all you got to see was like our friends who were either part of the team or just a part of paintball. Mm -hmm. So like this whole company just as revolves around players, you got short from dynasty and Ironman. Um, LJ also used to work here. Um, Josh, Hal, Danny, who grew up as a big fan of, um, HK, um, Kenny, you remember Kenny, of course. like everyone here. And then obviously our partner, Brandon and Jay and Josh, like these are all just players, you know? So that's like the best part about this whole thing is that at least, you know, we're all just paintball players and we get to support each other through this whole journey. So it's awesome. But that's why it's cool of what you guys have actually built because yeah, it's, it's a bunch of paintball players, but you guys have along the way had to become innovators and businessmen as well too, because mm. you, know, you can't just you know, wing it all the time. No, it starts out winging it in right? the beginning then, a little bit. Yeah. yeah but. <laughs> I mean, that's the same way for me too. I, I, when I started all the things that I've ever done it, you get, you just kind of wing it until you figure it out. But once you figure it out, then you, uh, like I said before, you got to build on past successes for, uh, the promise of a better future, which you guys have just done so well. So yeah. And it, it is populated, it's populated by, by actual players. Yeah. The people that create the products you guys are doing, it's cool. It's just a cool thing to see, man. Yeah, it really is. I appreciate it. Anyways, um, so we got to get into it because 2024 NXL, we got a big, there's been a lot of moves in the off season. And that's really, really why I wanted to get you here and hear your thoughts on all this. Yeah, it, it's uh, every year, man. I say this all the time. Every <laughs> year, I feel like I say this and I just think it can't get any crazier. And I warn myself as I'm thinking that, well, you know, probably will get crazy again. And you will see certain things on the horizon that could build up and teams that could fall off and teams that are building and, and all those, you know, different possibilities. But yeah, this one was, uh, was a pretty fascinating off season, which then lends to how interesting this, this year could get. And, and at the end of the day, which I'm sure we'll get into it at some point, but you know, it is fundamentally important for paintball to be as fascinating as possible. And, uh, and when you do have these big dramatic moves, it, gives people a reason to care, which is at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here. Yeah. hundred percent. And if I don't, if I, I wrote down a couple of things, if you don't mind, yeah, yeah. as we're getting into you saying, getting people to care, I was going to ask you before we get to like all NXL stuff, mm -hmm. what your thoughts on the current state of paintball is right now and what's missing and then how us as HK army can help or in the community can help to make it better. I, I cause I, I did see an interview with you and Fraji and you guys were kind of getting into it a little bit about maybe 
this one-on-one stuff or maybe this and that and you you had your position and he had his so i don't know what yeah i mean i've had so many of those different conversations (laughs) you know people i mean i've been i'm doing this for a long time Anna. yeah i started long long ago uh, when i was just a teenager and then in my early 20s and i am no longer even close to that i kind of started doing writing for magazines and then did a lot of the tv shows and worked on all the webcasts and you know have been doing a lot of this stuff over the years with a lot of the creators so you know we've come a long way i i think that uh is as far as you know, we could kind of burn this entire conversation. Yeah, we don't got to do that, that. But, you know, I was just curious. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just that uh, I, I think that we need to take stock of where we came from and where we are. And there's always seems to be because I feel like paintball seems to. I mean, I, when I was a kid and I was at the field, I remember the owner of the field at the time, God rest his soul, Barry Arena, gave me my start. But he and Russell Maynard also got rest his soul, too. He used to run the Great Western Series back in the day. Oh, nice. But they were telling me I mean, at the time, paintball was illegal still in some places. It still is illegal in some places. I've been detained by customs in different travels around the world. Yeah, uh, those are some interesting stories. But just because it, we do do we uh, participate in something that is a little bit raw, it's a little bit on the edge. We try to pacify that though, and I think that that is something that needs to be discussed because you know that we we don't need to you know take the balls out of the game to and and uh, make it as simple as possible to try to get it to the biggest audience because if you look at why certain sports have become popular throughout the you know past hundred years um they just were these really fascinating specific endeavors that were pretty also raw rough around the edges and very fun to do and also consume as a as an actual viewer you know so I know there's just so many different ways we can go, but as far yeah. as what could be done, I just think we need to lean into what this actually is. Yep. You know, I didn't start playing paintball to play the sport of paintball. Um, that's not really what it was at the time. It was, we were playing war. It was a gunfight and it was, uh, I was a kid amongst men. I was 16 years old. It was a bunch of dudes that own businesses or construction workers or guys in the arm, whatever. It was just military. It was, uh, it was pretty rough around the edges. We weren't wearing face masks. We were talking. Yeah. About I can't off, believe that. That's off camera. Show me that photo. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But that's, and then I, I almost quit paintball when we had to put masks on yeah. because it would just seem like a tamer, weaker version of what was already pretty amazing and awesome. And uh, I mean, that was a very childish thought to have at the time because, I mean, and, and stupid, I feel embarrassed even to mentioning that, but, but that's how I felt yeah. um, because it, um, you know, so then we've had all these different changes, but, you know, we do not need to make it more simple. We need to make, we need to embrace what this is. Right. And it is an incredibly interesting thing that, and I, I talk about the gifts of the game all the time in which, you know, we could go down that rabbit hole, but um you know, and, and all, but, but at the same time, you know, it, it, the allure of the gunfight and the way the game is played can also be a little seductive if you love it because yeah. you think that that's enough and that's not enough. You know, football, baseball, whatever it may be. I mean, even, you know, what's happening with Drive to Survive, Formula One, all these different things. Yeah. You know, the, them driving race cars around is not enough. Yeah. Them playing football is not enough right you know we have to kind of lean into the uh the other parts of it which is the inherent drama that exists in the human soul when they decide to participate within uh the context of a competitive paintball team and a competitive paintball event so i'm i mean i i, I want to like i i people will be like maddie talks too much so no I, you don't we want to keep you talking yeah no nah, it's <laughs> but uh, when you say that you mean more of like the off-field stuff of like what's going through their mind and like that that type of stuff or like for sure yeah because if you think about it um we don't really have a home run we don't have a car crash no one's getting knocked unconscious so if you look at the inherent visceral draw of certain um other sports that exist out there you know, so people, some people find baseball very boring. I grew up playing baseball, so I know what's happening. But what, what are we really watching? We're yeah. watching a human being with a rock, essentially, <laughs> uh, throwing it at a, another human being with a stick. And yeah. that has gotten so popular that Otani is now playing for the Dodgers, making seven hundred million dollars. So three, it's three yeah, quarters of a billion dollars. Insane! I cannot believe that when I heard that too. About you know, so um, yeah, which is uh, and you know congratulations to him and yeah. congratulations to baseball that it's gotten that popular in the past hundred and you know, 30 ish, 40 ish years. Uh, but we, we are not that old, but the thing is, is that, so when that human being is throwing that rock at that other human being with a stick, if, uh, if the guy with the stick does it really well, he's going to hit that ball about 550 feet, yeah. the crack of that bat, the roar of the crowd. I mean, that's been drawing people to the ballpark along with just being at a ballpark for, you know, since the late 
1800s. Yeah. Um, people still watch racing to see car crashes, uh, you know, but, but I think the people that run that eventually were like, that's just not enough. You know I mean? The, 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 you know, the diversification of the way that media is both created and processed, um, you, we have to be giving people more. So when, and I, and so it's like, when you're looking at these, these, uh, when you're looking at the game of paintball and it's a, it's, you know, we're playing war, man, it's a gunfight and yeah. we've, you know, have these colorful jerseys and we shoot paintballs at each other. I actually always hated the name paintball, to be honest. Really? Yeah. I just, I don't feel it does it justice. What, what, what's the name you would like? I, I think something like battle ball would have been more. Battle like, ball. Been, I like battle ball. It would have been more appropriate. Yeah. Because that's what it is. It's a battle. Yeah. But you know, people are used to naming things after the instrument upon which you play the game. Right? Yeah. You know, so, or at least one of them. Um, but, uh, but I, I just remember my dad who never really liked the game of paintball much, uh, he used to joke. He's like, Oh, what can I do with that paintball gun? Can I paint the side of my house with it? Like, no, man, I'm going to war with this thing, dude. You yeah. know, I'm going to go test myself against yeah. other people to see. And that's ultimately what it was to me in my journey as a player, at least was to test myself. It's like, how good can I get at this? Yeah. How far can I take this? And then now as, um, doing the media stuff and it's pretty much why I retired. I mean, I stopped playing in my late twenties because there, were, I just saw, this giant chasm that we didn't have, which was telling the stories, Yeah, you know, cause the only, you know, the, it's like the, there's so many different ways to look at this from a psychological pr perspective, but the more people, the more that people know, the more they want to know. Yeah. And it's, it's tough sometimes to get the, the people that are involved in the game of paintball to open up and be honest with their experience. Uh, but in that honesty, there's a, a certain amount of just, it grabs the, the human heart and it pulls them in, you yeah. know? And since we don't, again, and it's good. And I, I understand this, this is just how it is, but you know, we don't allow fighting when, when you watch a UFC card, half those people are going to the hospital, even if they win. Um, when you watch a, a, a race, people's are they're 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 in a mortal moment. They could die. Yeah. Uh, what about hockey? They still allow fighting to the hockey. Day. You're allowed to throw down a little they've, bit they've and then they break to, it up. I used to, <laughs> People have been hearing me you know, say this. We're getting a little squad of New York Extreme battling Dynasty, a little punch, and then you stop it. Yeah, I mean, people, I've been saying this for, I've been, it's a joke, but I, I would pay to watch this. It's like, we want to make paintball bigger. Autocockers only. You're not allowed to wear a face mask and, and, and allow fighting. Dude, game over. I would pay $20. Now, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what paintball needs right watch there. That. I'd pay that all day. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but again, it's, so but what do we have to give? Well, you know, it is incredibly, as we always say, it's a chess match with guns. Right. Um, and, that's what it is. And, and so, you know, I, I try to argue constantly against simplifying things because, you know, the, the conversation like, oh, we need to simplify this. So like a, a grandma that's tuning in can watch. That's not our demo, bro. Yeah. Like that's not, no, it's like, not grandma. That's not the mom or the, the not saying moms can't play grandmas. Maybe they can, but they probably don't want to whatever yeah. grandpa's too. at a certain point. It's like Bob Long used to tell me, he's like, Maddie, you know, your heart never dies, but the body does eventually. So, <laughs> shout out Bob Long, by the way. Shout out Bob Long. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's just, um, but there's a lot of inherent drama within the context of, of the game. And it's, you know, I remember having a, a conversation with uh, Nikki Cuba when we were making um, Heroes for a Day. Yeah. Um, and there, and when you create ever dream, evergreen content, so stuff that, you know, people will still, every time I go to an event, someone will come up like, dude, I just watched Heroes for a Day for a first time or yeah. Sunday Drivers or whatever. And like, oh man, that was amazing. And those things are 15 and 20 years old. Yeah. Um, so when you do create a type of evergreen content that does tug at the human soul, well, why does it do that? It does that because it, it, it allows a certain emotional vulner vulnerability to a moment that everyone can relate to. Yeah. So there was a, a, a scene in that movie where we're in a hotel room in Germany, I believe it was Germany. And, you know, I mean, we were giving it to Nikki pretty good, man, you know, um, and, uh, and he started tearing up. So, mm. you know, Nikki comes up to watch the rough cut. And as we're driving home, uh, he says to me, he's like, and I got to give him a lot of credit in this because I can understand where he was coming from. But on, on, on the drive home from Patrick Spore's house where we saw the rough cut, he was like, Maddie, I don't know if I want that scene in there because I look weak. And I was like, Nikki, you don't. You know, that's a human moment that yeah. you had there. A lot of people have been in that moment. And if we tell the story properly, because at the end of the day, you become essentially the main character in this very diverse cast of human beings. Yeah. Uh, because at the end he does, you know, he went from being a guy that was a very hyper aggressive first, you know, first attacker as we call him now, uh, to being 
a, a clutch, a very, like, and he entered his career with the Ironman and winning championships and being one of the most clutch players in the game. So, and anytime you watch a movie or read a book, a fictional novel, whatever it is, I mean, what the, the artist that's creating that is trying to do, or the group of artists that's creating if it's a movie, is that you have your main character, uh, they are, some sort of struggle is initiated, an instigating event happens, and then they have to change. And if you see that change happen in front of you, you root for that person. Yeah. And so because that actually happened in real life to Nikki Cuba, where he went from being a guy that was obviously, I mean, you don't get on excessive back in the day if you weren't a phenom or a star. And so, uh, but he went from being a guy that we couldn't really count on that much in those pressure situations to being the, one of the most clutch dudes in the entire sport. And I was, that's what I was trying to tell him. I'm like, if you let this be in here, man, like not only do you, you're the hero of this, of this specific story or one of them and, and the biggest one probably with the way that it was displayed, uh, but you'll also be a legend forever because yeah. people will be able to see what you did yeah. and, and they will be able to understand and see that human moment and, uh, and draw strength from it, yeah. draw strength from your trials. Yeah. And that's what happened. No, I love it. No, I totally agree with those human moments and those things like that. That's huge. I mean, um, there's been talk, I don't know, Bart's been throwing it around, I guess, possibly trying to pay for maybe a Netflix sort of uh, show that would kind of do what you're saying with the F1 and you get those human moments and, and all that emotion and then have paintball in there as well. I don't know how true that is. And then also the question is, I don't know if you've seen, but like having those human moments and doing all that stuff, but do you still like this five on five NXL style or would you like those human moments and what you're saying and all that emotion? And maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one, and I don't know if you've seen what we've been doing, but there's the glow ball. So you can really follow that ball. Like yeah. would you adding, maybe adding a different mix to it with, with what you're saying? Cause that emotion is, is everything. Cause that's, that's how you fall in love with the character of the person. And I understand all that. Well, there, there's a, uh a certain level of spectacle to all sport and, and people have heard me say this many times, but I have to reiterate it just cause I feel it's true. Um, I call it the five fingers of the sports marketing fist heroes, history, ongoing narrative, spectacle statistics. Yeah. And those elements form a fist to punch you in the face to make you give a shit. Yeah. And when you look at how media has slowly, but surely over the years and, and it was less back in the day, but I mean, the New York times used to have a writer that would go around with Babe Ruth and, tell of his exploits, keeping us a lot of secrets. But at the time, this is the twenties we're talking about yeah, thirties, but, uh, you know, so, but, but bringing those certain elements to light. So with, with paintball, um, you know what I, I, the five on five current format that we have, and this is another thing. I mean, the NXL, like you look at the regional events, they're strong. You look at the NXL it's selling out events. Yeah. WC is crushing. I mean, yeah, him is killing it. Like, yeah. Crushing the, it. Yeah. Like the, you know, it's, it's, it's still like we, have to be careful tinkering with something that is working gotcha. for the people that are playing it. Yep. Um, but that being said, sure. Especially, you know, you look at what Oliver's doing with this one-on-one -on -one and the duel and the joust, uh, been a part of that. It's really cool to see. I think that could be a part of the fundamental future of the game as well too, but we can just potentially play jazz with format. I mean, yeah. imagine seeing a seven man X ball, you know, yeah. with something crazy. Yeah. You know? Like there's just ways we can tinker with stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't have to change the fundamental thing that is currently working that has been built now for a long period of time. So playing around with the, the visual spectacle of it while also combining those different elements and, you know, trying to get, uh, it's like when people ask me, who should we follow? And, you know, should we follow Dynasty or, or Impact? I mean, well, we kind of have to follow them all in some way, shape or form. And the companies, you guys produce some, some kick-ass media and there's lots of other people out there. We're also living in kind of a golden age of creators. Dude, you know, it, we're pumping, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, no, but there's good, more paintball content being pumped into the social media streams than ever before. Yeah. So there's, and they're all, a lot going viral. I mean, we're getting a lot of viral clips. Verbal's getting a lot of viral clips. Rye Guy, I mean, NXL, Go Sports. There's so many viral clips of paintball now. I mean, it's amazing. Well, it's, you know, like we were talking on the phone the other day. Yeah, man, we are all on this crazy pirate ship that is pro paintball and we're all together trying to take prizes. We are in business together, Yeah. you know, and, and the, the prize we're trying to take is the attention. It's the prize of attention. It's right. the world's attention that we require. Well, how do you get that? Again, there are no car crashes. We're not having a motorcycle, you know, do a, a double backflip. There's... You know, we, but we, what we are is it is, it's a crazy, pretty crazy thing, man. Like we're going to war, you know, it, it's a metaphorical war. No one dies. Yeah. Um, but, and there's, you know, as I was watching, uh, this, uh, it's, it's called Shogun based on a very famous novel it just came out on, it's on Hulu, but, um, and in it, you know, it's, so it's set in the 1600s, early 1600s in Japan, um, uh, which was a, one of the more, 
fascinating time periods of of all of humanity yeah um but the main character without spoiling anything he kind of gets essentially awash upon the shores of japan and he's trying to understand their culture and and it's uh and so they say it's like a japanese proverb but after kind of looking into it a little bit it's not you'll see where i'm going with this in a second but um essentially it was an observation from a jesuit missionary but he said that you know that that uh that every human has uh, either, you know, you could say it three faces or three hearts. One is one that lives in your mouth and that's what you give to the world, at least initially. The other one you keep for your friends and your, your close people that, that surround what is the core of your life. And the third one, you have to be very careful to never let anyone see. And that's the third heart, the guide, the guarded heart that lives deep inside you. And you have to be careful who you show that to. But one of the amazing things about the game of paintball is that it brings that out. And there's other, and there's very, very few things in on planet Earth that you can undertake as an endeavor that forces that guarded heart out. And paintball does that. Yeah. So if we could find a way to capture that on a regular basis, so going back to who should we follow? I mean, my advice to people, because I talk to a lot of media creators, and again, it is amazing. Um, never seen this many passionate people, you know. And I've worked with, the, you know, the Rob Durders and the Patrick Spores and all these different people throughout the years. And my God, you know, talk about evergreen content that stuff that will live in the canon of paintball media forever and was the foundation, the core of what exists today. Um, but let's not get it twisted. We do have a lot of amazing creators that are living right this second that are producing some amazing stuff. Yeah. And I would just say to any players out there or people that are getting cameras put on them is that every time that you go in an interview, you don't need to say, yeah, ma'am, this is just all about family. You're working out hundred percent over here. We're trying as hard as we can. <laughs> You know, and uh, it's about where we respect our, you know, we're going to try as hard as we can, but and, uh, we respect our enemies. Uh, you know, it's like, look, try to, let's be as honest as we can, because that's that guarded heart and the fact that it comes, because it will come out. Yeah. You know, when you are in a, when you're losing four games in a tournament and you're getting your ass whooped and it's a mercy rule loss, we're going to find out what you're made of. You know, are you a whiner? Are you a good teammate? Are you a leader? What are you? What, what exists in that guarded heart? And there are so few things because we, most human beings don't seek that out. Yeah. Most people don't. But if you play tournament paintball at any level, that's going to come out at some point in time. We're going to see what you're actually really made of. And then as creators, if we can capture that and show that to the world, just like, again, props to Nikki Cuba, salute, that he was willing to have that, you know, as when I took acting in, which is a funny story because that's how I met Rob Durder, but uh, <laughs> when I took an acting class, and I would advise anyone to take an acting class if you can, you'll learn a lot about yourself, but it's about having that, that, uh, that private moment in public. And it's tough, it's, it's tough, but, uh, but there's a lot of magic there. And yeah. I think that that's one of the things that we have, you know, is that paintball is a giant highway to your guarded heart. Yeah. And it will come out. Yeah. So what are you made of? Yeah. You know, so no, Oliver had a moment like that. Uh, he started tearing up on camera talking about Shane Pestana and what he did for him as a pro player. Forgot what video it was or what clip it was, but Oliver was crying and that was a big, when we all watched that as kids were like, what? He's literally crying right now on the DVD. Cause we were watching DVD back then mm -hmm. about how much paintball and what Shane Pestana did for him as a player. And like, and just to see that, that was like all I can remember. That was the most, like to, he was giving that much emotion instead of just saying the generic stuff like you're saying. Like that was like, was, we were like, wow, he's literally crying right now. Well, the other sports can afford it because, you know, no matter what happens, people are still going to, well, not necessarily no matter what happens, but almost people are going to tune in and watch the NFL. I mean, the yeah. NFL is not, when I grew up watching football, play football in high school a little bit, um, this is it's not the same game. You know, it's not the same game. Uh, they've tried to take the fighting out of hockey. The people will not let them do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so we used to joke that um, the only time you're allowed to cry is if somebody dies or uh, you lose the World Cup. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> but, uh, but but that's the thing. Again, it will bring it out. Paintball brings it out. It's a very and it's a special thing and I always call it the gifts of the game. But, you know, nothing focuses you like people shooting back at you yeah. you're shooting at somebody and you are yeah. completely locked into the moment. Everything else fades away. Yep. You are laser focused on, you know, people say living in the moment. It forces you to live in the moment. Um, and then afterwards there's all of these emotionally chaotic things that can happen. You get, a, you know, you get picked up on a team you never thought you'd be on. I mean, look at Danny Schoenauer as we could, you know, kind of get into some yeah, of yeah, these yeah. conversations, but you know, it's like, I remember talking to Danny 
and it was just amazing that he gets a chance to play for San Diego Dynasty, and he earned it. Uh, but I think he ended up pitting for him uh, Did he? back in the day. Yeah, yeah that's so, awesome. And then that's now huge. he's playing for the team. So, yeah. you know, you have these uh, big elation moments and then these incredible disappointments. Maybe you get cut. Maybe you get demoted from your starting spot. You have to work harder to try to get back in there. You get shot 35 times on a run through. Uh, you maybe you have a friend betray you said he would stay on the team and leaves. Yeah. You know, there's so many of these moments that anyone that's played this game for a long period of time. Yeah. Those things are there. They exist yeah. as creators, you know, so that needs to be highlighted because that's one of the biggest, that, that thing again. And I just, I truly believe that paintball is a special uh, endeavor in this moment, in, in, in this world, because the world, if you're not careful, will do everything it can to make you softer to round your edges off physically and metaphorically. You know, you want your house to be perfectly 70 degrees at all times. <laughs> you know, you want to be, you want to eat the most delicious meal. You want to make sure that, you know, your kids never suffer yeah. any possible iota of struggle, you know, and that's not painful. It's all about struggle. Yeah. If, if you are treating it for what's possible and that's what, and turning paintball forces you to do that. So yeah. I think that as the world tries to round our edges off, um, you know, I mean, paintball is one of those, those special, almost miraculous moments that it will do the opposite. It will harden your heart in a, the best way possible. It will toughen your mind up in the best way possible. So the rest of the world is a little bit easier. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't know if you saw our world cup video, but, uh, Axel played his ass off at world cup. He did. And uh, when they lost, and he had he played so good, he played amazing. Obviously, you're watching all the games. He was just bawling on the sideline. I'm watching it because I'm I was right down there in the pits, and I was just like, it just it just was like so I would, I wanted to start crying for him because it was just it was because I knew how much effort, how much one he loves the game and how good he played and just how you know because he wanted to win for Tontons and he left Impact and, and he loves his country and all that and. Uh, I just felt for him right there, like in that moment. And Danny, Danny caught a clip of it that we put up, and I kind of got to relive it again when I got to watch it. But that was like the, my, one of my favorite parts. There were so many good things at World Cup, so many good run throughs, all this cool stuff. But that moment right there, like what we're talking about, just resonates with me from from Cup. Uh, yeah, and there, that's the thing is that paintball is not just about and look. And it all everything has a place, you know. When I think when uh, like when Cassidy first started doing those big, uh, epic slow mo um, highlight spectacle based videos for you guys yeah. that hit hard because, and, and it, everyone loved them because, well, that is also paintball. When you slow it down, it's when you play the game of paintball, it does slow down the world. Time itself slows down. You know, you're the way you, I mean, I, everyone has probably experienced this, but when you head check away from a ball and dodge it and yeah. when you see the move perfectly and then you believe in yourself and you make that move and you're on the run through. And I mean, I can remember some of those that happened 15, 20 years ago, games I played as a teenager in the woods. And I can remember it with the clarity, more clarity than I had on the drive up from San Diego today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like that's how powerful those moments are. Yeah. Um, so there's a place for that yeah. because that's part of it too. And it is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful sport. There's a lot of color there. There is a lot of, uh, there is spectacle. But we can't, again, get lured in as lovers of paintball and lovers of the game into the spectacle. You know, it's yeah. like, you love your wife, I love my wife. You know, it's, it's a different type of thing. You know, it's yeah. like when you really are intimate with something, you can't expect everyone else to already know the, the, your, the depths of your love for something. Right. You know, so when you look at the game of paintball, again, because we do not have this cataclysmic ending to certain things like there's a cataclysmic end to a baseball when it gets smashed and a dude's hitting you know he's got an exit velo of like 120 and thing goes 550 feet when a dude gets absolutely crushed by you know a middle linebacker and then gets his knee blown out and he's out for you know or whatever the or both winners go to the hospital in a ufc main event and they're shaking hands in their hospital beds yeah we don't have that yeah you know we don't have the fighting in hockey we don't have what so what do we have Okay, well, we have, again, this beautiful symphony of violence that is the professional game of paintball. Uh, we have this incredible emotional depth because these aren't even the guys that are getting, there's guys getting paid out there. They make their living playing the game, but they're not driving their, you know, custom Ferrari to their yeah. mansion and then getting in their, you know, Lamborghini speedboat. No, uh, no it, there's a lot in that, uh, again, from this emotional standpoint, which is ideally what we need to be showing people because... You know, when you look at how popular reality television and the shit people just make up too, it's not even real. Yeah. This is a real drama that's happening. Uh, so yeah, there's, again, we could talk for hours about yeah. this sort of stuff, but 
I would like to see more of that, to be honest. Um, but also it combined with, again, it's, it's all, you know, I mean, all your fingers are important. The, what's more important, your lungs, your heart, your liver, you need them all to live, you know, you don't need your gallbladder, but you do need the rest of those things I just talked about. Yeah. You know, you need your brain. You have to have all these things. Yeah. You can lose a tooth, but uh, God forbid if you lose them all, you know? So it's, when we look at all the things that, that, that can be there, it's like, sure. Could we tweak the format? Yeah, we could tweak the format the, the, and the, the, the powers that be, you know, shout out to Tom Bar, all the, all the guys out there, they get, they want input and yeah, they're trying to tweak it as much as they can to keep it, you know, to not break what's already awesome, yeah. but to try to make it a little bit better if possible and more entertaining. Sure. Uh, you know, it does suck when we go to world cup and the game ends zero zero and we have to go zero zero into an overtime period after dudes playing, you know, peekaboo for 15 minutes, <laughs> you know? Um, but that being said, I hope you don't just clip that out and just, no, put that no, in no, 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 but, no, no, uh, no, we would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but it's, but that's not ideal, you know, like that's not ideal. Yeah. Um, did I, I, and I don't even mind cause some people are like, Oh, Maddie, do you, you know, like the layout is controversial for this one or that will be controversial. And, and people will always ask me my opinion. Cause I, yeah, I have to sit up there in that tower and I have to talk about paintball and try to make it exciting, informative, uh, and entertaining for 10 hours a day, three days in a row yeah. or a cup five days in a row. Um, so yeah, give me, give me something to work with boys. Yeah. Come on uh, boys. <laughs> but, uh, but that being said, um, you know, it, I don't mind a game that is a little bit slower because like it's like when I I've always been a UFC fan since UFC one. Yeah, I mean I was the kid when in high school that I went to my dad. I'm like, oh, there's, you know, because when I was a little kid, I was a fan of wrestling, Hulk Hogan, all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah me the too. Giant, I but then I, I realized it wasn't real. Yeah, I still thought it was entertaining, uh, which is also an interesting story because you know that's the opposite, right? So it is that's a basically a sports soap opera. Yeah, you know, so they, they it's all drama. Like, WWE? Yeah. WWE? Yeah, I love yeah, yeah. I've been to like a hundred. Yeah. Just so you know, I fell in love with that. Me yeah. and my brother, and we would all go, we go to all of them. Stone Cold, The Rock, so, uh, all those guys. So Dan Napoli, also a huge fan. Is he? Uh, yeah, yes, huge it. fan. So, <laughs> but, it, but, but, but if, you know, if we kind of start talking about that, well, why is that entertaining? It's entertaining because it's a sports soap opera. These guys are doing, and girls are doing these amazing, you know, almost just gymnastic-like athletic moves yeah. but it's all predetermined yeah it's quote know. unquote fake yeah because it's already decided who's going to win or lose so they it's but it's a it's a soap opera yeah you know and people love it they just made like a you know, it was like a five billion dollar deal or something they crazy with netflix <laughs> and there but that's 100 percent. well not 100 percent, but it's it, the the draw is those two things the spectacle of that insane gymnastic like athletic performance from dudes that look like the rock yep combined with the drama of a soap opera right Boom, five billion bucks. It's a win. Okay. It's a win win. You, know, so, you got my attention now. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. listen. <laughs> right? So that's the you know, we can't I when we put cameras in front of faces, the less of the yeah, man, so stoked to be here, fighting hard for my family and yeah. Uh, you know, just really respect our opponents and we just got the better of them today. Yeah, and that's that, not what you're going to get when you get the rock on the mic or whoever, or Hulk Hogan or, or whoever it was back in the day. They're yeah. going to give you some action to work with. And that's that. fine if you're yeah. golf or if you're, uh, you know, a baseball or whatever. They've been around for, you know, golf's been around for hundreds of years. Baseball's been around for 140 something years. You know, it, the game's been being played professionally since like the 1880s. So it's, it, we don't have that luxury. Yeah. We do not have that luxury. If we're talking about what's actually going to grow the game, it's yeah. all it's all these things. It's everything. That's why I said we could literally. That's, burn yeah, like yeah. No, I get it. I get it now. No, I appreciate you taking a couple minutes before uh, we got into the whole NXL stuff. Yeah, but everything you said makes total sense, and I 100 percent agree with everything, and not just running off and trying to change the format and you know all all that stuff. We can do that. We can, no, but we, but, but we gotta we, be we careful. Do. Exactly. We gotta, but it's fine. Again, it's a very nuanced and complicated conversation. Is, you really is. start dialing in yeah. on that. So, and then they are. They tried something at Cup. Uh, yeah, you're guys... going to continue to try things. And yes, the goal obviously is to, you know, there is a just, you know, I mean, this is the, the black hole, this, you know, the, the black box, you stare into it and yeah, all... the entire vortex of uh, vortex <laughs> all of all of humanity exists within your pocket. Uh, and there's a thousand, uh, but there's a thousand channels on TV and almost nothing on. If you still have cable, you yeah. go and look at cable. So, I mean, the thing that still tethers cables existence to the current financial, formula is basically live sports yeah you know so again long conversation yeah. there but, uh, <laughs> but but there's a lot a lot of possible different ways that we could do that but again when you look at what is evergreen what exists still in humans minds to this day um it's story based it's true real diving in like a dagger to the heart truthful based real moments um that are narrative based yeah. you know like that's why that stuff is People are still watching that stuff to this day. Yeah. You know, so 
more of that would be great. We, and we've been trying to, you know, do that as much as we can. That's why we need all the support we can with go sports is like, please subscribe, yeah. you know, because the more uh, it's like, you, you guys know how this works. You businessmen, you, you get it. If you want to do cool things in this world, in the Western modern world, well, you need capital to do that. You need support, yeah. you know, you need support. And the more that we have, the more stuff we can do. Yeah. Because you know? we've been doing a lot with a little for a long time. Yeah. And you guys done great with a little for a long time, by the way. The the webcast is absolutely amazing. I mean, if we're not an event for whatever reason, we're all watching it here. We got big TV, the surround sound. You sound amazing. All your camera angles now are absolutely insane. Like you guys are doing great for what you have. I appreciate that. Yeah. But, you know, to me, it's just you know, that's cool and everything, but I try never to, we n try never to rest on our laurels I and mean, we've been trying to upgrade the tech as much as again we can because, you know, yeah, we'd love to get into a place where every you know, cause people randomly be like, Matt, I got a great idea. I'm like, okay, cool. What's your idea? I would love hearing good ideas. So what's your idea? Uh, is, is, you know, okay. We put a camera on, on every single guy's, uh, uh barrel, you know, we and always say this. <laughs> No, we said in the loader, in the loader. Well, and I don't mean to that's great. <laughs> then HK needs to make a loader with a camera in it. There we go. Uh, we'll partner with you guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll be your podcast partner. But yeah, that would add, um, you know, so 10 dudes a team, 20 extra feeds to our that's existing feeds. Yeah. Uh, the operators to work that. I mean, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things when we're sitting there and we're like, okay, well, we, you know, we, we, just, we need to drive to survive for paintball. Yeah, we we'll go, Maddie. If you go in the F1 cars, we can go into Lewis, Dude, Lewis, Lewis Hamilton's car at any time. He has his drive cam. Why can't we go to Oliver's cam? Because that's two mil two million dollars an episode. So we need more. We need we need more support. All the teams have to wear that. Like you just swap out the mask or the frame, but all the frames have a camera built in. Yeah. Okay. How do we do that with the fact that everyone has different goggle sponsors? So then we got to talk. That's to all where it gets sponsors. weird. It's That's the sponsorship my point. Problem. Again, yeah. there's a lot of things. That not are like possible. that in the NBA or anywhere so else. They all have you, to wear the same shit. You notice that I'm not saying not possible. We'll never do that. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But anyone that's, you know, if you want to build something that's again, has to be sustainable. And when you look at these amazing paintball tournaments that have existed or things that have gone before, well, there's a reason why some of them aren't around because it didn't make enough money to make it sustainable. Yeah. You know, so this is just the reality. So yeah, great idea. Um, but in order to pull off great ideas, you have to get, now we actually have to have a very serious conversation about, okay, how does that actually work in the real world? Yeah. So, you know, dynasty sponsored by JT, you get guys sponsored by push or HK. So if we have a heat, in a dynasty game and we got the heat and HK goggles and dynasty, you know, do we then have to build them out? How do we have to then work with the companies to help install these things and attack them because then they're going to break, they get shot, et cetera, et cetera. This all has to happen also within the framework of the actual game itself. Yeah. You know, we're not adding too many technical timeouts because we're also, sho we're already shoehorning 10 hours of production into a day and are barely on the edge of daylight sometimes and storms. So it's complicated. Then it, it gets, <laughs> yeah, great. Let's do it, dog. <laughs> You know, but, happen, but, us, but we're going to have plan. to have some very, very serious conversations as to how that actually gets pulled off. Yeah. Um, for instance, so like we brought in the Telestrator. Now we've tried to use Telestration before. I don't know if you guys catch any of that on the World Yeah, Cup. so I was going to tell you, because you, you've been upgrading. I didn't know if you have any new stuff, but it, is that where we're seeing the lanes of the paintball? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. So yeah, you're showing the different lanes with this cool, kind of like how the NFL does. Well, if you think about it conceptually, so let's say my tweaker notes, as my wife calls them, <laughs> let's just say this is the field, right? Yeah. So when we punch in and we get a beauty shot of somebody in a bunker, yeah. you lose context. You don't, ex especially when we're now we're going to go to this layout where if it's a D, you know, a D side, a middle and a snake side. So yeah. even if you're super fluent with the game and we punch in really close and we're on a Dorito, well, there's a decent chance that's going to be on the D side. Now we don't have that. So now I have to say extra amount of context and narrative to give somebody an understanding of when we do punch in close yeah. of where that person is in the con, why are they shooting? Why are they shooting that way in the context of the game? We get a little farther out. It's not as much of a beauty shot. Um, so you're starting to lose, you're gaining context and you're losing beauty and, uh, and that visceral, you can see the guy's eyes as he's coming out and he's like dodging streams. Yeah. And, you know, so then when we punch it way back, and we get the overall context of it with the drone shot, um, which a lot of people love, uh, but not everyone loves it because then they, you know, it's like little ants running around on the field. So yeah. and the telestration uh, technology has gotten to a point where now we're starting to try to 
be as creative as we can with that. Again, always serving the viewer. And that, that's always the big question is that, that we are always thinking about is that who everyone has to serve somebody. You guys serve your customers. Correct. If you don't make cool products, if your guns don't work, if your goggles bad customer don't service, work, yeah, all that bad customer service, well, guess what? You're going to go out of business, that's you know, right. and obviously you guys aren't because this facility is badass and I'm <laughs> super stoked for you guys. Um, but similar situation, you know, so, but it's, it's, it's tough because also typically in a, in a production, when you're going into a situation, you, in all, all pro sports, the show comes first. Then you build the, the game. Yeah, the game has existed for a long period of time. You got TV timeouts, and you know when they build facilities, they you know put the infrastructure in for this yeah. stuff. That's not how it works with paintball. We have to build kind of like the Olympics, almost in a sense, where the events are already existing, and they build all that stuff, and then you go in and you create the show around the actual event that's happening instead of the other way, which is how it's normally done. Right. You know. So again, but when we're trying to do these, you know, certain things with the visibility. So yeah, if we, if we punched all the way into actual cameras on guns or goggles, that's best case scenario. And I think the tech will eventually get us there or having RFID chips in people. So you could have like a heads up display, um, you know, in the corner kind of ghosted out, like when you're playing call of duty yeah. and then, so you can kind of see where guys are or just the functionality like that we're getting there, but that all that stuff has been probably expensive uh, up until most recently and it still kind of is, but we're kind of getting to that. So, yeah. so again, with the telestrations, we're going to have that in Vegas, but that's, you know, we got to have Steven shout out to Steven, uh, Peterson from SVP, SVP paintball. Um, just had him on one of our ghost board shows. He's been doing some stuff. He's a good analyst, a great analyst and, uh, used to play like high level video gaming and stuff. Nice. So loves paintball. Yeah. He's a player. Like you said, we, we have like our crew for ghost sports is mostly players. That's sick. Um, so uh, they're pros, like they do, you know, that media is their profession, but yeah. they are also paintball players yeah. too, for the most part. But anyway, so, but he's, he's basically the guy doing the telestration because I have to look at, you know, what's happening out there, the pits, I got to be dealing with my co-hosts, any ad reads that we have, anything that has to get filtered in, the stats, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, me being able to do telestration is not, all, it's problematic. It, it can be, uh, yeah, it's too it, much at that it's, point. It's, it's too much. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have a guy dedicated to doing that and that's what he sits there in that booth doing the entire day. Wow. So, and that was a cup. So that's something else we're going to continue to bring. But yeah. as far as these other technological advancements being, you know, threaded in and, inst and uh, instituted in to what we're trying to give to the, to the people we're trying to serve, which is at the end of the day, people who love paintball and then also trying to addict people also to the paintball content, but giving it again, it, when I punch, you know, again, this one, you know, always keeping these things in mind when we're doing these, these sorts of add-ons is that how does this affect the show? You know? Yeah. All, and so, and, and ultimately the story we're trying to tell people. So it's like this layout's been controversial in a way that, so we have essentially it's the mirrored field, but you know, opposite the, sides. The new Vegas layout. Yeah, the new yeah, Vegas yeah, layout. yeah. This is what you He's know. Been playing it on digital paintball. <laughs> what do, What do you think? Yeah. What do you think of it? I think it's gonna be like a fast. And it's gonna fast be is good. Yeah. I like hearing fast. Like at any point, somebody can like bunker the other guy. I feel like. Cool. Fast sounds good to me. So, that, so we, no, we, no we, zero zero game. We heard there's a theory. I don't know who makes the layouts. Is it you? No. 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 There's a theory that the NXL is really snake heavy on their layouts because obviously you guys need some action and something to talk about. Okay. So that's a similar situation. Yeah. So, but we've, so traditionally in sports, it's called the 180 rule. So again, if I'm, if, if I'm sitting from my perspective, whether it be football, basketball, whatever, hockey, you're always looking at it from the same side. Yeah. Uh, we have a three dimensional field, so we do not, it's not like football or hockey or these other types of sports because yeah. people are hiding. I mean, the whole point of paintball yeah. is to try to stay in your spot. Um, so, and then you have that other side of the field. So when a guy is hiding on the, you know, the other side of the Dorito and we're all shooting it from one angle, cause and this is a fight, you know, if we go back to the very first, uh, webcast that we did back in the late 2000s, 2008 with Patrick Sporer, it's a longer story there, but essentially it was like, okay, we can't break the 180 right now. Eventually we would do that and then try to throw up a graphic at the bottom saying D side cam. And then we added a cable cam and the drone cams. And then we just put a Doritos cam over there and just not put the lower third in because it whips around sometimes so fast. You can't put that up in there. But it, again, it, 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 so for your paintball super fan, uh, yeah, it's great. But for the casual viewers can confuse the shit out of them. Yeah. You know, so that's, something we're always trying to keep in mind too. And I will say that when a lot of times you'll hear me reference while you're listening to the show, you know, on your screen, this is this bunker that, you know, we're looking at from this angle just because it may be confusing, you yeah. know? So, um, but it's so, I wouldn't say that just because we have added the cable cam, the drone cam, and we have put cameras in the back that cover that side, we don't, 
like, yeah, sure. Having a, a snake side again, if, if I'm putting my, you know, the hat on upon which I only care about what the consumer out there cares about and what they're seeing, then yeah, having snake heavy presence would be ideal. Yeah. Um, but that's not going to be the case because the game still needs to be fun to play. Cause we're not in a place where like the average consumer of a, a football either doesn't ever play it anymore or maybe never played it, yeah. you know? So it, we're in a different, this is a different story for us. Yeah. You know, so hundred percent we're paying Paul. They obviously usually all play. Totally. That's who's watching. <laughs> so we, you know, again, you have to serve your consumer and yeah. that's what we're trying to do as much as we can given the limitations of the fact that we are not the NFL or F1 and we can just go and throw, you know, a, you know, it's like hard knocks for their uh, narrative based yeah, or backstage Lakers or yeah, one of those. Like, things, I yeah. mean, that's, you know, those, they're bringing the, the amount of human beings they bring to bear from a media perspective on those shows is, is ridiculous. Yeah. I could show you some of those stats. It's, yeah, it's, bet. it's a lot and it's a lot of money too, you know, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, but it's, but you're dealing with billions of dollars. Um, so they can, just, <laughs> they can do that. They got, they got, they got that resources. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off too. So what's, what's everyone thinking about the layout, the Vegas layout? I thought, and we thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. I mean, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, again, obviously. it's novelty. So some people love you know new things, novelty. They like to see changes, and other people hate it. So yeah. I think you're kind of seeing that play out in the comments section yeah, yeah, yeah. of some of these. You, you kind of that did look like the bulk of people were like, "Oh, baby girl, what are you doing?" You know? <laughs> uh, in the sense that it's it's a you know, we already did something like this in Texas, um, but it is creating a lot of conversation. I think yeah. a lot of people are going to be excited to play it maybe to watch to see what happens and throwing curveballs like that. I mean, it does make my job harder because I'm going to have to sit up there and I can't just call it the D side, you know? Yeah. So, and so it, it does go against 20 plus years of paintball storytelling <laughs> from a actual calling the game perspective. But as far as getting eyeballs on it and, and having people excited to see what's going to happen, it, it does again, throw a bit of a curveball, which yeah. Yeah, you know, I got a smile on my face for a reason. I I, I do want to see like so I'm driving up to this practice. Yeah, you know, God forbid. It, oh yeah, you're gonna you're about to find out tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm gonna find gonna out see tomorrow. See some action, baby. Yeah. So <laughs> as long as the 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 biggest storm of the winter doesn't come through and obliterate yeah. the practice. <laughs> But uh, whatever, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to get into some team stuff real quick before yeah. I let you go. Um, one, um, I want to start with Houston Heat. Obviously, one of our sponsor teams. They lose their coach or coaches let go. Uh, Todd Martinez, and at World Cup, I don't believe they won one match. Horrible, not. horrible World Cup. I mean, they did they did okay throughout the season. I mean, obviously they were able to get that bye, which led them into Sunday no matter what. But they didn't win a dang match. And these are all my friends. I love Tyler. My friends too. Love Ronnie. Love Chad. But what are your thoughts? You know, one, they get rid of Todd. Now, now an aftershock, which we'll get into for a second mm -hmm. before you leave. But um, what are you thinking for them? Do they have some pressure on them going into this new season now? I mean, can Ryan Smith pull this off by himself? Ryan Smith also was a coach before, not a player, mm -hmm. and then came back to playing, now back to coaching. So just curious your thoughts on Houston Heat. I think that absolutely Houston Heat, uh, you know, they very rarely change their roster up. The, um, Sarge, the brain trust of that team, they do not like to make player moves unless they absolutely have to. I mean, yeah. I've had conversations with him after they won two world cups in a row, not too long ago. And, uh, they, you know, it's been one of the most successful teams ever. And I was actually playing golf with Randy and, and there was a big time, big time player that wanted to, to get on the team. And he was like, do you really think that I need this guy? And I was like, dude, you just won two world cups. You definitely don't need him, <laughs> but it, will it make your team better to have him? And is that a move that you guys are, are willing to entertain? Uh, they did not pick that player up, but you yeah, know, so I know who this player is too, because yeah, I was fighting for them to get it and it didn't work out in my favor. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's kind of one of those situations where it's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, these are just a lot of the conversations that are had, uh, in the off season, mid seasons as the, as the, you know, the true brain trust of these teams are trying to figure out, well, what is it going to take to succeed now? You know, heat having done as consistent as they have done. Uh, yeah, they were not good at cup. Um, they did lose every single game. They had a negative 13. So points for versus against, yeah. uh, lost to damage dynasty, Tauntauns impact, yeah. a negative 13, 12 points for 25 against terrible. And, and I saw those guys later, we were chilling at son of the beach on Sunday, oh, yeah? Yeah, Sunday yeah. night and they were solen, you know, yeah. I mean, they definitely, I mean, most of those guys are, they were, they were telling me, man, I said, Maddie, this is the, 
I was, you know, because I said, hey, man, don't hang your head too low. You guys had a pretty good year. Yeah. Uh, I know you don't want to hear that. And I've been in a situation where we were on excessive. We took, I think, five or six second places in a row um, and to inf- infamous in Dynasty in the mid-2000s. And, you know, we'd come home and people were like, oh, congratulations on the second place. And I'd be like, I don't want to hear that right now. <laughs> go, f- go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, so it, it's just kind of one of those situations where it's frustrating. It's yeah. incredibly frustrating. So moving forward for them is, yeah, they absolutely, when you look at that roster and how good those guys are, they absolutely still have a chance to win. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's a, a famous saying, and it's been attributed to different people over the years, custom auto, Mike Tyson, whatever. There's Muhammad Ali, but. I don't really know exactly who came up with this. It's probably just something that's been in boxing forever, but essentially it go the saying goes, there are people out there that are training for a fight and they don't think they know that their opponents are training harder than them yeah. and just can't fathom that. Yeah. You know, how, how do you go to war knowing that your opponents are training harder than you? And the thing is though, is that once you do reach a certain level of competency, so it's different with paintball though, because it's like when I talk to the coaches of, let's just take the top two teams right now, Dynasty and Damage. Yeah. When I talk to SK and Joey Blue, that axe is sharp. Yeah. You know, that samurai sword is is ready to cut a fly in half. Yeah. So for them, it's about keeping guys healthy and about keeping them mentally sharp. Physically, they're obviously already sharp enough skill-wise, yeah. experience-wise, to go out there and win. Dynasty winning more than half of the events since late 2020 and then Tampa Bay Damage two in a row last year one in Texas the year before on a lay, on the layout, the crazy layout. So that, you know, that bodes well for damage here in Vegas. Yeah. Um, so for heat, it's not just about how much are they training? It's like, what type of training are they doing? Where are they at mentally motivation? But I think because when you're dealing with legends like that, as far as motivation is concerned, as long as they are doing enough to, you know, cause Chad George, you know, one of the greatest, he'll be a first bat hall of famer. One of I love Chad, a good friend, but also just, to, I've loved watching him play his yeah. whole career. And, uh, but he's been diving in that snake for a long period Forever. of time. Forever. Yeah. So durability is an issue. So yeah. again, when I'm talking to Joey and I'm talking to SK and I'm, Hey, I heard you guys have been playing a lot. And SK will be like, ah, oh, we've been playing too much, you know? <laughs> and then with and Joey, he's, cause he's got some dudes in their mid thirties and, and as I don't know how old you are now, Marky, but I'm getting in my mid forties and like the body just don't work the same it's way. Not the same. It's, it's, it's not, not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> but, paint, but that's what's crazy about paintball as dynasty has proven that it doesn't really matter as long as you are still fast enough, have your quick enough reflexes. Uh, I remember having a conversation with, uh, the, uh, notorious guys in California a few years ago, they just lost a game, made some really poor decisions, getting into good spots and then just getting shot, you know, in greedy gunfights. And afterwards, you know, their coach, uh, Ryan was there, is now coaching AC Diesel, which is a crazy story too, uh, with how they could do this year. But anyway, and, and I went up to him, I, had, I just had to run because it's like, I don't get these long breaks. Like sometimes I have to sprint to the porta potty yeah. pee and then sprint back. You yeah. know? So I don't have much time. I was wondering, I was like, how's he even use the restroom around here? It's not, it's He's, not easy. They yeah. got you up there all day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Food poisoning from some bad sushi on day one. Oh World no. Cup. That's a whole nother different story, but Hey, you got to just no choice, right? You got to go through it. Grind it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I'm running back and he's like, Hey, can you talk to the dudes real quick? Um, and I basically, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, it was like, I only had a couple seconds to fill their ears with something to say that's going to mean anything. But I said, look, you know, I think dynasty was getting ready to play. I'm like, how old are you guys? You know, let's show of hands. Anyone under 25, all their hands go up. I'm like, do you think that you have faster reflexes than Ryan Greenspan? Ryan's 41 years old. Yeah. I'm like, don't answer. I can tell you, you have faster reflexes. If I put you on a machine and I put Ryan Greenspan on a machine. Now, Ryan's probably a big outlier for a 41 year old man. Yeah. His reflexes are still pretty nasty yeah. and quick, but you know, I'm probably, if I put half of the dudes from Notorious on a machine and tested the re- tested the reflexes, they probably beat Ryan Greenspan in some sort of test of, of that ability, that acuity and how quick you are. Yeah. But, and that's what I said, like, you guys are mistaken. You guys are looking at this game the wrong way. This is not just a, yes, of course it's paintball. It is a game about reflexes, but that's not just what this is about. Right. You know, it's a, as you know, General Mattis one time said that the most important place on a battlefield is the six inches in between your ears and they just make better decisions than you guys. You guys are getting in these fifties. You're making sloppy ass, poor decisions and getting shot out of a key spot. Like that's why you guys are not doing as well as you need to do. This is before they went pro. Um, 
And that's why Dynasty is excelling because, yeah, sure, every one of those guys, those still pre, the, again, in great shape for their age, but losing some steps, man. Like, yeah. that's welcome to your 40s. That's what happens. But that's not what paintball is about. You know, Yosh is one of the, again, talk about, I love Yosh. Probably he officiated my wedding. I, there's no one on planet earth I'd love more than Yosh Rao. He's in like my top five. I love Yosh. Shout you know, out Yosh. But Yosh is, and he's, you know, he's an athlete, but he's never been the fastest guy. No. You know, but that doesn't matter. He's smart because he's intelligent. Yeah. His timing is impeccable. He's a hell of a gunfighter. He's an amazing leader and a teammate. And so he brings all these other incredibly crucial facets of who you are as a person, what you're like as a teammate, what you're like as a paintball player to bear. And that's why he's still getting starts on Dynasty at 40 years old. That's you know, so and that's the thing. So when you look at Houston Heat, again, apologies to everyone for the, these long winded answers, but I can't help it myself. I but it's it. like, but uh <laughs> But uh, but with Houston Heat is is that they're a little younger. Most of those are, they're younger than the core dynasty guys. Yeah. Um. They still got it. Yeah. You know. It's so how healthy can they stay? How much are they? How much are they all buying in now? Yeah. Um. Because that's a big thing too. We got a, the leadership, the coaching, the players, the training schedule, all that stuff. And again, I'm not just saying oh Heat needs to get out there and play every single weekend and they need to grind. like maybe not. You know, but they definitely need to keep their skills sharp. They're obviously like, look, they went uh, sixth, second, fourth, second uh, before they had the really bad cup, right? Yeah. So it's still there. Yeah, it's, they're it, close. It's Fedorov going to be healthy, and where's his head at? Yeah. Chad George, is he going to be healthy? Uh, Connor Kelly keeps getting way better. You know, obviously, can they get Mishko over for every single event? Yeah. And then the rest of the squad, you know, Ryan Moorhead, Dizon, whatever, Chad, every, that's, that's a nasty, nasty they team. Squad, Bonville, man. Like, yeah. love, they, they all... it's, as we always say, embarrassment of riches, right? Yeah. It's amazing. So yes, the short version is hell yeah, they can win a tournament this year. The complicated dissection of that situation is that these dudes have been doing it for a long time. And anytime that you're doing something for a long, you're not the 20 year old kid coming up that wants to go play five days a week. Yeah. Your body can't even do that anymore. You know, so it's, th where's that fine line, right? Yep. You know, where's the fine line of motivation, training, leadership? But uh, it would, I don't think it would surprise anyone if Houston Heat won multiple tournaments this year, to be honest. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to get your head on that. Um, and then some of the new, we got some new teams coming in that you're going to be watching. One is these paintball fit kids came in and just stunted all over semi-pro, beating Danny a few events in a row when he played against them. Um, they have a lot of hype right now because of her. What team do you play for? Oh, sorry. Titans. Titans. Oh, yeah. Titans? Titans. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Short was on his team. Brandon Short, too. Okay. Yeah. And they were giving them problems. I mean, they, they had one, I think, match where they came pretty close. But these kids are doing good in semi-pro. I had Yaya on here. That wasn't not too long ago. He flew in. But Yaya was just really trying to stress the difference between semi-pro and pro. And that, I guess, you know, paintball fit was in the pros, you know, under a different name and didn't do so well. So now they're going to come back in. What's your thoughts on, on fit coming in? I think that, you know, look, uh, one of the most crucial things about the game is can you play five on four? How often are you playing five on four? When you look at how, you know, how good Dynasty has been playing the past few years, they shoot a lot of bodies on the break. Yeah. Uh, damage shoots a lot of bodies. All damage, of the good teams sure. shoots a lot of good, a lot of bodies on the break. So they, they play up. That's 20% of your firepower. You, know, you lose a body. That's a big deal, right? So, um, and when you look at one of the reasons that, you know, so they have great off the break shooting, amazing gunfighting. So, cause the same thing, okay, cool. You get out five, five, five on five in your bunkers. Somebody steps up, wins a gunfight real quick. So those are two immediate huge things that paintball fits really good at. They shoot bodies on the break. They win gunfights. They also don't make too many dumb decisions. Like, eh, look, when I say dumb decision. I mean, everyone's going to do it. You know, it's. Yeah. yeah, that's just, it's not a knock, bro. That's just how it is. Like every, everyone game. did that. It's yeah. hard. It's paintball. You know, it's like <laughs> baseball. Every gonna be the, be the best dudes in the world or whatever, any sport, pick your, pick your, you know, your poison. But they'll be like, yeah, man, I was I can't believe I swung at that pitch. You know, <laughs> why did I swing at that pitch? I can't yeah. believe I did that. So, but it's just we're minimizing your mistakes. Yeah. So they minimize mistakes. They shoot bodies on the break. They win gunfights. They have weapons. Um, I think that they're probably going to have a much better showing than they did. Cause they've also now had two more years of experience. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. is a hundred percent right. There's levels, you know, the, you know, as they say, there are levels to things Yeah. and there are levels to paintball in and of itself. There's levels to the pro league. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, and you look at their, uh, their bracket, it's probably the softest bracket of the four, uh, had a, we did a show with ghost sports Had Joey blew it on there. Todd uh, Martinez, Mike Bianca from the hurricanes. Um, and we talk brackets, everyone's been talking brackets. I, I mean, everyone's going to have a little bit more of a opinion as to which is the bracket of death quote unquote yeah. you know is it a is it d b is what? definitely not c so heat is going to come in 
and play. So you have uh, so Revo, and the, and the reason why that most people that does seem to be the consensus is you look at the tiers, right? So um, tier one in bracket C is Houston Heat. Yeah. And we just talked about Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Revo had lost two of their core guys. You know, when you lose, if you're Revo and you lose Henry and you lose uh, Omara. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, now, they still have a lot of talent on that squad, but we will see where are they going to be at. Are they, are they really a, a tier two team? You know, a team that, so a tier two team is a team that's going to be consistently making Sundays, make a couple runs. Gotcha. Um, that's typically where those two tier, uh, tier yeah. two teams are. And then you have the ML Kings. So the ML Kings have been kind of grinding their gears for a little bit. Like, I love Charlie. I love Kyle and Mingo and you know, all those dudes on that team. Uh, I love watching them play the game, um, you know, and they've they made a bunch of Sundays in a row for a while, but then they lost Connor yeah, and Connor yeah. was a big hit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just we don't know, you yeah, know, it's, it's like, little, where are they at? It, yeah. it, it to be determined. Right. Yep. Um, but then if you look at who the other three teams are in that that next uh, that tier three, it's Legion, Hurricanes and Aftermath. So who would you of those four teams, who would you like to have if you had gun to your head? Who do you want to play in your bracket to make sure you make Sunday? Well, Legion just picked up J-Rab. Yeah, that's a problem. And I was going to yeah. ask you about that. So okay. they're going to be a little bit better than they were last year. Yeah, so. hopefully, you <laughs> yeah. know, I, mean, we'll I, see. Would, I would hope because yeah. and that makes so they decided to throw some money around in the offseason. Yeah, they're uh, paying J-Rab good for J-Rab good for Legion, yeah. right? Uh, question with Legion was they weren't able to get their, you know, their starting five were making good runs a couple years ago, yeah. but you know, it's been hard for them to get that it's starting five. Smotrop's yeah. not going to be there again. Oh, is he not? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but you know, then you got the other four, uh, cars, Lev, Sergey, uh, Kirill and Malloy. Malloy so baby. if you add J rab to that, that's and hard. They, that's gonna a, be, I'm so curious to see how they do. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. So that could be really good for them. Yeah. We will see. Right. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to play them. Okay. So <laughs> on paper, they're better than the ML Kings. Yeah. And then you have the hurricanes, the hurricanes also like he had a very terrible cup, uh, taken 24, 21st, but they went seventh, seventh, sixth, fifth. I mean, their negative wasn't as bad as Heat's. It was a negative nine at Cup, right? Yeah. Uh, now they weren't playing all. Heat had to play all the top teams, so it, that's not. You can't really take that yeah, plus it's a little minus. Different. A little different. different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they played Damage Dynasty, Tauntauns, and Impact. Yeah, and that wasn't that easy. Played Notorious Legion, Versed, and her, uh and yeah. So it's different. It's different. Yeah. But but the thing <laughs> is, is they both had bad cups. Yeah. But the Hurricanes are bringing the same roster. They've now learned, and they got an amazing coach of Mike Bianca. They're, they've been a tough game for everyone now yeah. for two years, essentially, yeah. since they first came in a league. Okay, so that's your other Tier 3 team. And then you got Aftermath, who had one of the best events they've had recently at Cup, and talk about playing every weekend and playing... Grinding. Yeah, grinding. They're out there on every Thursday during the week, plus the Fridays and Saturdays, so or Saturdays and Sundays, so at least three days a week. Yeah, so and they're, they're incredibly determined. they got yeah. a deep roster of a bunch of hungry dudes that yeah. are willing to grind because they they can you know yeah. their bodies will take it and they need to you know because they're they're at they're again this isn't a knock when i say that their axe isn't sharp enough because if you're not winning paintball tournaments your axe is not sharp enough that's just the fact it's just the fact yeah. it just is what it is yeah. uh so so that's you know again when we're looking at at that that c bracket and then for uh the fourth you got diesel <laughs> this is why bracket a is so nasty because it's dynasty uh, x factor legion diesel and then blast camp right and for blast camp it's like careful what you wish for boys because you may end up in a in a prelim bracket with dynasty x factor legion and diesel yeah that's you know? so, <laughs> so for your first pro event yeah you're coming in hot yeah that one. And, and god bless them you know i mean yeah. if i was them i'd be stoked it's a true I, test you get to play the boy like all the all the best of the best when i was a kid and i was on was i got on a pro team when i was 16 yeah wasn't good at the time. They were like champions in the 80s. And they were trying to reform, bringing some younger blood in. So I was one of those guys. So I'm 16 years old. We're at my very first World Cup. And Bob Shriver, who ran the team, came up. And he's like, I got the brackets for... He's like, well, who do you want to play? And I was like, I want to play the Iron Man. He's like, that's what we're playing. I was like, great. You know, because... <laughs> but cool. but it was... But like, yeah, like, let's yeah, go. No yeah. choice, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, do you want this or not? Yeah. And if you want to win, then you have to be able to beat everybody. Yeah. Or at least enough to... You know, because you can lose in the prelims a little bit. But you can't lose on Sunday. No. So you want to talk about, you know, as, as pick your metaphor, man, iron sharpens iron or, you know, yeah. you press, you know, the, the compression is what makes diamonds again, it, whatever, yeah, it, yeah. It, pick it, talk about it however you want, but that's going to be a diamond making experience. If blast camp can, again, like we talked about the, the three hearts, right? It's like, you were going to see for blast camp. What's what really lives in them? Because yeah. that's, they that's, make it out that's of that a one. lion it's, pit, it's, bro. Racket a is the lion pit. Yeah. But then again, so with D, 
uh, impact extreme aftermath bears and then shock. So they get shock in tier five. Whew. You want to talk about shock? Yeah. Can we, can we talk about shock real quick? So what's your thoughts on this? Oh, I'm so okay, excited. So, t- I mean, they make, they get Todd over there. Plus we have Todd Adamson who's, you know, behind this thing. And, uh, they're picking up some, I mean, they have that tryout. Look like they picked up some solid players. There's a lot of hype on them right now. Should be. There's a lot of hype on them right now. Yaya was just here, by the way, and said he's going to smack the shit out of them. They have no chance to beat Heat. So I'm, there's like a bloodbath already brewing. I don't know if you heard about well, this. Here we go, Yaya. Yeah, no, I saw the clip, that's but that's what, what I'm talking about. about. We got some hype, boys. Hey, give the people what they want to hear. It's a little hype. Come and on. That's, and that's probably what lives in his soul, too. Oh, Even yeah. though Yaya is a nice dude, but, you know, he's <laughs> no, got, he some, believes that. He got some fire in him. And, and Yaya played on Shock with Ronnie, you know, way yeah, back in the he day. He came up there. So he's, you know, he's able to have this little feud. He's a Midwest dude. He's from there. Yeah. So so I'm just excited for this. Vegas is, I'm just excited for Vegas. I just wish that heat and shock were in the same bracket i know uh so we could hype that matchup even more i know but yeah so but shock look as we saw with diesel and we've seen i mean it happened with excessive back in the day it took us some time i mean we went to our first event in huntington beach and took like it was the worst we'd done i mean i remember sitting there thinking like this is the worst i've done in the pro division and probably since we started you know i think we took like 13th or something it was it was was nasty it was disgusting it was horrible and not in a good way yeah um not like well that was nasty (laughs) not the good nasty no no it was like it was nasty um and then uh and then went on to and then we took like a sixth and then a bunch of seconds but it just takes time you know it, it and how much time it takes is that there's no formula for that um there's principles things that will have worked in the past and can work in the future but as far as actually what you need to do specifically and how long that's going to take it's it's not a quadratic equation dude you know yeah. it, it, it's it's a it's much more psychological so which which we saw with Diesel last year. Yeah, that's and what I was going to say. Look, they got all these players, and what happened? Yeah. And then the what same. What happened was only one Sunday was made yeah. out of five. So With Hinman, and then they get rid of Hinman. So I don't know what's going on with all that. It's well, like there's some weird – but now J-Rab's gone, so I don't even know what's going to happen over Well, that's there. a d- different story. Let's yeah, talk yeah, about okay, Shock. Okay, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm excited yeah, as yeah, you I mean, are. We already fell off Shock, my yeah. bad. <laughs> but, but with Shock, so if, if you, the, the leadership there is great. And I, if you look at the – if you look at who they picked up and, and how they picked them up, you got a lot of guys that really want to be there Yeah. because, uh, you know, so LJ and, um, uh, LJ and Corey mm-hmm. are coming off teams where they were excelling and doing pretty well. So he was playing great. I mean, yeah. we always are talking about Corey cause he's Corey. out here when practices and he's, he's Corey Hill's, right now. Yeah, He's the real deal. He's getting you know? better and better. He's yeah, yeah. He keeps every year. I love seeing that. And I've seen Corey since he was on elevation and he proved that he could be a, a guy that could win low body situations and be very competent in those, you know, stru- stressful clutch moments. Yeah. You know, kind of like Marcelo is for Dynasty. We saw that early on out of his career. Um, but then he went on to add some offense in there and he was doing really, and he has just been crushing it, right? So, uh, was on the Ironman crew. That's part of the story too, that won in 2020. And they, there was an unfulfilled promise there with the Ironman of 2020. They go into Vegas, they win that tournament. And then COVID happens mm. and the team falls apart. Mm. And they, when I talked to some of those guys, they just always had in the back of their mind, man, what, what if, what if we could have kept that team together? Well, they get a kind of a chance to, to get that team, but actually make it a little bit better because they're better. I mean, Corey and LJ have been grinding in the deep end of the pro division now, because look at what happened to extreme last year. Extreme did incredibly well. Yeah. Uh, and they ran with, yeah, they got a few guys playing time here or there, but man, for the most part, Corey was starting a lot for yeah. them. Um, Silos was on that squad for a little bit too. And then, uh, and then LJ, uh, LJ Parrish, and he's sharing a little bit of time with Cody Bayless as the first attacker on the D side, but he was getting the lion's share of the spins and he's another dude that just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. So they're getting the best version of LJ Parrish and Corey Hall in the prime of their careers. Uh, they get an owner who really gives a shit. Yeah. I mean, Todd came to me in the beginning or midway through last year. Uh, and he had said, Hey, Matt, I need you to help work on a project for me. I'm like, well, what's that project, brother? I got a lot of projects going yeah. on. So what are we, do- what are we doing? <laughs> And he's like, well, I want to, I want to get a protein. I was like, okay. He's like, he's like, I know you talked to a lot of people. Um, what do you think? I'm like, man, too early to call here. We got to see the shrapnel cup. What yeah. happens with the explosion of world cup goes down. What's left, right? Yeah. What can you do that with that? So, and it took him a little bit of time, but he was very serious and sure enough, ended up, you know, taking over level, changed the name to shock, which I thought was awesome. And, yeah. and so he cares. Uh, and he's really adamant about build, building a winning team. And then, uh, you know, Todd and heat part ways and he gets that gift too. Cause I think that 
Todd's really good on this, and he's already worked with a lot of these guys. Yeah. So he's good. He's, he's good really good in these he's situations. A good fit there. So that's a good fit for them. And Todd's coming off, you know, everything with heat, and he's got probably more heart and drive right now than ever. Well, and then so they get – So, but it's also – because when people start talking about, okay, yeah, names on – they've even said, like, oh, the name on the front is more important than names on the back. That's a paintball cliche too, yeah. but it is. Um, at least in the intention of the moment when you're talking about the battles that are going down and what you can actually do, you know, you have to do sometimes be selfless. Maybe you aren't playing as good as that other guy is and you need to be willing to sit down for a little bit, but maybe you'll get it back on the next event or the next game yeah. if you go out. But it, but adding that pressure to people, it's like, that's another thing you could say, Hey, you know, not picking up new players and keeping a solid core is great because those guys can play a lot. They get to learn each other of that unspoken communication. When I look over, I see your body language, like, Oh, Mark is about to make this move. Boom. I now play off of that. Um, but bringing new blood in, it, it enlivens the mind and it, and it makes you really focus on playing your best game. Cause you can't slouch off at yeah, all. It spices things up. A yeah, bit. for yeah. sure. <laughs> and so, uh, but so then, you know, so you, it was a bit of survivor Island as far as like how all that team ended up forming yeah um as well it always should be like never get it twisted every pro paintball team should be survivor island it should be a shark pit or a lion den or whatever you want to call it if it's not that you're probably not gonna do as well as you could have you know yeah. because adding that pressure to the people that are have already been there for a while you know is 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 pretty crucial yeah um so anyway so then they get a guy like clay hughes so the like the ironman losing clay hughes i think is a big deal for the ironman i, I love the ironman's new roster but uh, Clay Hughes was a standout for them in the snake. They did not have a good year last year, but I definitely saw a lot of promise out of Clay Hughes. So then Clay decides to come over, even though he would have been a starting guy on the Ironman, and he decides to come over uh, and play the snake. So when we start talking about names, front and back, a lot of it is very specific as to pos position. So when I sit there and I have these conversations with guys behind the scenes, and we start talking players, um, it's not like, oh, I can go get this guy. I'm like, okay, well, how does that guy fit into your current offensive threat your defensive looks you know the team as a teammate how does that actually work out uh, you know do you have them just being a snake player obviously versatility is important where you know we, who knows what type of layout we could get it could be a crazy layout like this we start having that conversation so when you look at across the field having a Corey hall and an lj Parrish, and now a clay hughes with an a rod and a Celos yeah, and, and a Corwin Weber. A lot of people don't know about Corwin Weber. So he was uh, one of Level's best players. Uh -huh. Blew his knee out skiing at the beginning of last season. And out of all the dudes I've seen play in the past five years, he looked like he had top level promise. Really? Yes. Like elite level okay. potential skills. So he could be a little sleeper on that team. Coming, he's could. coming out hot. I mean, I, I told him, I was like, when all that happened, when I talked to Todd and he's like, okay, you know, got all these level guys. I literally had a list. I gave him my scouting report on every single one of his dudes that he was now inheriting essentially. And he's like, well, I'm gonna have them all try out. I was like, okay, definitely do that. Here they are. Here are my thoughts on every single player. I was like, do not sleep on Corwin Weber. <laughs> like, Corwin Weber is, I don't know how his knee is. I know he's still like working on it cause he completely blew it out. Yeah. Um, but if he's back at hundred percent or even anywhere close to it, he's willing to carry him on your roster cause he could be really good. Uh, Anyway, so it was kind of one of those things that, if, yeah, man, you look at that roster and it's a pretty nasty roster and they're just starting now, you know? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, you got the, the, how many total did they pick up? Do you know exactly? Or they like, ended up picking Al. That was kind of a question at the end is yeah. that how many would they be willing to carry? How many do they want to carry? Um, like, but, is their plan but, to run two, two lines or are they going to have one solid line that just goes I, back I, to back I, to back I, rotating I, a guy? If I was them, I it probably has to lot it probably has a lot to do with what happens at these practices on this layout. Gotcha. If I was them, if I was Todd, I would not run two lines. I would run a starting line and then I would filter other guys in. Uh, I like the pickup of Nick. I think he's still really hungry for it. But then you know, so when they're filtering in that nine tenth guys, because uh, then they picked up Trent Nitta and they also got Al right. Um, so you know, Trent Nitta is a, still a prospect, but he, according to the Todds. As we're, as <laughs> the, Todd's, the Todd's, the Todd's, baby. Well, it's weird because you both call him Todd. We, it's like Todd, know, this, yeah. Todd that. I'm like, okay, I have to now start yeah, saying yeah. both their names. My bad. <laughs> uh, no, I no, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like, I'm gonna have to do that on the show. But yeah. anyway, but uh, so when you're kind of filtering it in, like Al was a big, you know, he's been a part of the Ironman forever, um, and then the Ironman basically shed all their previous dudes. They kind of have to like try it again, which I did cost him Clay in the long run. Yeah. That's one of the reasons that Clay left, um, even though they they wanted to, they tried to keep Clay, it just didn't work out. But realistically, when you're starting out a new team like that, I think it's a mistake to run two full lines. I think they should go starting five mm -hmm. uh, to put their best foot forward uh, so they can at least you know try to make a Sunday. And then we'll see. You know, I mean, if, if they have all 10, 11 dudes playing really well, then maybe you have to revisit that after this practice. 
but I just I don't think that's the most intelligent way to progress in this in this first event. I think they should go starting five. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, one more. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go pretty soon here because I know you got a long drive. What do you, how long is it? Like six hours? Five hours? I, gotta, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, maybe it's five more least, minutes. It's at least, yeah, it's like, I don't know, probably six to Sacramento for me. It depends on yeah, traffic, yeah, no, right? Five minutes max, if I, I let, if I leave now, <laughs> if I'm, I'm, I'm golden. If I leave in two hours. No, no, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay. I just wanted to ask about Axel going to X Factor and your thoughts on that. Because I, I, he played so good all year. And, and what, they traded LJ for Axel, basically. Is that what happened? No, not really. The way that that so Axel and Matt Jackson and I think it's TJ go back. So yeah, uh, they okay. played. They had played together on the Tauntauns, and uh, and so it on its on its face it does appear. Like, wait, what? How did Axel yeah, end up I was on? Like, I was like, where did this the, come from? The because then what, what, he left Impact, didn't go back to Impact. Now he goes to X Factor, and you know Barton. Everyone took pretty good care of him. I heard on Impact, so yeah. I was like, what just happened? So I, that's why I wanted to hear your side of it. Well. It's one of those things. It's like anytime anyone ever, I didn't talk to Axel about this move, mm -hmm. but I've talked to a lot of guys about moves they made throughout the years. Uh, and I never tell anyone what to do. Yeah. Very rarely, maybe one out of 20. I'll be like, this is obviously better. You should do this because that's not how people should be making decisions. Anyway, you, you need to be making that decision. Um, I, but I just paint different possibilities. I'm like, okay, well, if you do this, you know, then this is what's going to happen potentially. And if you, if you decide to go this way, you know, but at the end of the day, and I always tell people, I'm like, but when you're done with this, because one day this will end, yeah, and you will no longer be playing pro paintball anymore. You will be a retired pro, right? And there's chances of you going back to that uh, to get slimmer and slimmer every year. Yeah. So, what story do you want to tell yourself when this mm. is all done? Wow, that's a good one. Because think about it. I mean, even if you're getting paid, like these, a lot of all the top guys are getting paid, some more than others, but. <clears throat> But at the end of the day, it's not enough that the money itself is the difference maker. Yeah. Uh, though I start every one of these conversations, anytime someone hits me up to have these conversations, the very first question I ask them is I'm like, well, how bad do you need the money, bro? Yeah. You know, because if it's like 10 grand or 10 guns or whatever it may be, but if you're sleeping on your mom's couch. Yeah, I'll take it. 20, I'm out of here. You're 23. <laughs> that's, those are the times yeah. where I'm like, bro, this is a no brainer. I get that. That you makes know? sense though. So yeah. then, then you, you kind of, you, you're kind of. You're not doing yourself a service or your family or anyone if yeah. you decide to, you know, again, it's like, do you come from money? I don't know. What's your, what's your story, bro? You know, like, a, but if unless it's, it's dynasty to ask you to play and you're not getting anything, that, well then there's, there's the legacy but, but, move right there. Yeah. But yeah. that's, you know, that's but even the, the dynasty guys get something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It's a no, no. Different. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But, uh, but, but it's still, but yes, but that's the question. So because like we, I think we talked about this before where, yeah, man, you're not, you know, if you're in a bad spot and you're not driving back uh, to your mansion, yeah. you know, in your Ferrari with like wiping your tears off from, <laughs> from not getting enough playtime with hundred dollar bills. Let's like, go. <laughs> I can't believe I got sad. Oh man. Poor you know, me. Yeah. yeah, poor me. <laughs> it's not that way. Yeah. Um, again, these guys are getting compensated, but it's not to that level yet, but that's what we're all trying to get to one day. We just have to be patient with the realities of our situation. Correct. But and it's so I officiate a lot of weddings over time. Uh, I've done like 20 weddings. And um, one of the lines in my ceremony is that if it's true when you die that your life flashes before your eyes, then the last story you're ever going to hear or see is your story. Yeah. So you better as well make it a good one. It's true, huh? You know, that's make, so make, good. Make it a good one because that's, that's so it. If you're, if, and, and then I, you know, and I say, and like part of that too is as you spiral off into the abyss, I really doubt that you're going to be like, oh, I really wish I'd put more money in my 401k. Yeah. You know, like that's probably not what you're going to be No, thinking. not at all. You're going to be cycling <laughs> through all those amazing adventures. And again, it's one of the gifts of the game because it forces, like we said, that guarded heart out. You get to show people your true self, yeah. get weighed and measured. And at the end of that, and you can work on it too. You can come back and do it better the next event. So it gives you all these things. Um, and so, yeah, so with Axel, I think that, I, again, I haven't spoken to him about it. I have talked to Ryan Brand a little bit about that decision. And yeah. he just said that, you know, he's boys with those dudes yeah. and and uh, really like playing with them. Um, and I think that was ultimately, the, and obviously, you know, <laughs> X-Factor is pretty good. Yeah. And I they've been, is... they're a legendary team. They did really good last year. Not the not the World Cup they wanted to have. They also, uh, you know, didn't, you know, they didn't make it deep. So, yeah. Um, but they had taken a second place at the third event. So, uh, and they're on the upward swing. So they had lost uh, Archie and had kind of figured out what they were going to do as you know, past couple seasons. And they start off a little slow that next year, but then picked right back up. I mean, they're legends, dude. I love, I love the X Factor guys. 
Uh, and I, I just, I don't know. It seems that again, haven't spoken to Axel about it, yeah. but I just appears that that's the story that Got he it. wants to tell himself yeah. when this is all said and done kind of again, why he ended up playing. It's like, why would he not, you know, cause impact took care of him. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, why did he want to go back and play with his boys at world cup? Because I mean, like that was why he was crying afterwards yeah. because then I've cried at world cup too. Yeah. You know, I've had those vulnerable moments. It's that that's how much it meant to him yeah. to have that run with his boys. Because if they did pull that off, Talk about a cool story, you dude! Get to tell. Right? I get it now. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, that so makes total sense. And that's and that's what a lot of this is too. Yeah. You know, it's the passion. I mean, it's even guys that, like, sure, it can become a business, and then you have to have your fiduciary responsibility to either yourself or others. Um, but uh, but there's a lot of passion in this. I mean, most that's why most people are here. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's 100. Why you're still here. That's why I'm that's still here. Right? You know, I mean, there's <laughs> other things to do. Yeah. But because this this peculiar and amazing thing called paintball, it just contains multitudes. It contains multitudes of, uh, of all the, all of the best and worst of life, you know, betrayal, heartbreak, success, failure, physical struggle, mental struggle. It has all of it in there. Found all those emotions. Through Sometimes in one day. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Easily. <laughs> so easily. Yeah. So, uh, that's what I, I would say about that. And, um, I very much, am looking forward to seeing X factor play again. They're in that potential bracket, yeah. of death, but I think they're going to have a really good year, but that's, what's crazy about Marky about this year is that with the dynasty guys, a lot of them having kids like Blake's not going to be at the first event. Um, you know, uh, Greenspan's got twins on deck. There's a lot going on. There's a on. lot of action going on in the There's dynasty. There's a lot going on. So it, Greenspan having twins. So Jarber it, having a kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Krishir as well, too. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's it's um, four World Cups in a row for them. As we well know, it, it's the, the hardest thing to do is to stay on top when everyone's gunning for you. And everyone's been gunning for dynasty for a long time. And the fact they've been able to, to be this good this long is both precedent setting and miraculous. Uh, and will be an inspiration for, for people for generations. As long as paintballs are being shot in anger at each other, dynasty will live large in, in the imagination and the mind of what's possible. Um, but they still got to keep it up this year and a bunch of people could be out having babies. So, yeah. or will be at some point. Um, and they don't have Blake at this first one. So yeah, dude, just so many good stories here, but I think we could see maybe a little bit more parody this year. You know, we really could. Yeah. Uh, the, the, it, it is potentially written in the stars that maybe, you know, is Diesel going to get it together this year? We didn't touch on that, which I do got to get on the road. Yeah, no, we, 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 but, we'll save that for a next yeah, time. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not that far away. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, we'll find you, dude. But thank you so much for coming out. Um, I'm so excited for Vegas, the NXL, Go Sports U, just all the field layout. And then there's so much that can happen with all the teams, with all the all the stuff that's happened in the offseason, shock everybody. So I'm just excited to get there and yeah. see it all play out and unfold. Yeah, and it's going to continue to go because this is just the first event. Yeah. So then we got four we more big ones. Yet. Yeah, Dude. so it's, yeah, it's, it's 20, 2024 could be an absolutely wild year for pro paintball. I mean, I'm expecting it to be. So, I mean, I... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm always excited. The first and the last are always the the most fun. They're yeah. all fun. Yeah. But as far as just, there's so many stories. So yeah, dude, yeah. I can't wait. Dude, thank you so much for coming. I'm gonna let you get on the road, Maddie. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, brother. Thank appreciate you, bro. you too. Thanks. Appreciate it.